This right here is a 1990 Mercedes-Benz 300E that is known internally as the W124 and it is a car that blends comfort, safety, reliability and advanced engineering into a timeless design. So in this review I am going to tell you everything you need to know about the W124 and this is also going to be a good video to watch if you're thinking about purchasing an E-Class from this era. So first we're going to start off with a brief overview about the W124's history as well as the options and the different variants that were available. And then we're going to talk about the design, its cabin, the back seats, boot, powertrain, and then of course I'm going to drive it. Let's start the video talking about a brief overview about the W124 saloon. So this model series was unveiled towards the end of 1984, replacing its predecessor, the W123. And during production, the 124 was offered in either the saloon body style, as well as a wagon, along with the coupe and cabriolet versions that were badged as the CE models. And it's also worth mentioning in other markets around the world, the 124 was offered in a limousine version, and of course, there were the taxi variants in Germany. And let's not forget the Porsche Performance Built 500E. And in regards to the model range in Australia, the 124 was offered in either a four cylinder along with the other six cylinder models. And the variant time featuring in the review is a 1990 Australian delivered 300E. And brand new, this exact car had a retail price from just over 126,000 Australian dollars. And in regards to its options, there was a variety of different exterior and interior colours, along with some standalone options that included a power sunroof, vanity mirrors, leather seats and a leather steering wheel. And moving on to the revisions and updates the 124 received during its production, the first variants were built between late 1984 to 1989 and featured things like sprung seats, hubcaps, as well as the option between cloth and Embitex. So overall, a bit basic compared to the later variants. And then between 1999 to 1993, the 124 received minor visual updates for both the exterior and interior, as well as receiving a similar specification to the 126 and CE models. And those items included the option of a driver's airbag, soft leather trim, as well as other additional upgrades. And then between 1993 to 1995, the 124 received more noticeable updates along with some other additional upgrades that included clear indicator lights, a restyled front grille, and also receiving a new badge that included the E prefix. And then by 1995, the 124 saloon was then replaced by the W210 E class. Let's now move on to the styling. So the W124 was designed by Bruno Sacco, who was responsible for the W201, the W126, and other Mercedes-Benz models from the era. And the color of this example that I'm featuring in the video is finished off in diamond blue metallic, which was a factory option at the time. And in addition to the second update, it features Bosch halogen headlights, along with orange indicators on these earlier variants. And it also features the traditional Mercedes-Benz radiator grille with the star on top of the chrome, along with black plastic cladding. And in relation to the overall shape, it may look boxy, but during the 1980s, the W124 was one of the most aerodynamic cars of its time. Time. and all of these elements served as a purpose to reduce drag and improve fuel consumption. And moving towards the side view of the W124, as you can see, this example is fitted with factory optioned 15 inch alloy wheels, which are commonly known as Gullidexel or manhole covers due to the fact that they look like drainage covers from Germany. And in addition to the second update, it received additional chrome strips along the side and door handles, along with additional body cladding. And moving towards the rear design of the W124, from the rear it features halogen rear fluted tail lights along with a third brake light and 300E badging on the left hand corner. And in addition to the second update, it received slightly revised bumper bars at the back with chrome inserts along with black plastic cladding. And lastly, styling is subjective, so write down your feedback of what you guys think of the overall design of the W124. Let's now move on to the cabin inside the W124. So you have a basic Mercedes-Benz key from this period, along with standard manual door locks, and the key just slots into the ignition. And in relation to the overall design, I think this interior is very timeless in terms of the way it looks. And in relation to the W124's build quality, it isn't so much the quality of materials like the leather or the wood grain, it's actually how this car was put together. So in terms of materials, up the top of the dashboard just feels very solid. 
and even when you search lower down it's all high quality vinyl moving towards the door cards they feel very sturdy the door handles feel high quality and even the timber looks brand new this car also features its original floor mats and even the carpets feel very thick and plush the seats are in good order as well the leather is nice and soft whereas normally when you find examples that have been parked outside they dry up very quickly and some of the factory options that were fitted to this car includes a power sunroof that opens and closes and also has the tilt function and in addition to the 300 it also features extended leather and the interior itself is finished off in grey complemented by the Zebrano timber trim and it also features a leather wrapped four spoke steering wheel that feels very nice to hold on the hands the steering wheel is fixed into place however the seats do offer plenty of adjustment and you can also adjust the backrest as well and towards the center are your air conditioning controls light switches and the button for the headrest and if we look lower down this car features its factory original becca mexico am and fm stereo that also comes with a cassette player and a four speaker sound system and moving down towards the center electric window switches with sound adjustment along with a left hand mirror control whereas the driver's side is manually adjustable and right in front of me is an analog gauge cluster showing in kilometers per hour going all the way up to 240 and on the left hand side displays fuel oil pressure temperature and a fuel economy gauge and on the right hand side a rev counter and an analog clock and moving towards the right hand side are your light switches manual handbrake and on the steering column indicators wipers and your cruise control stalk and lastly storage so we'll start the glove box as you can see that is a decent size for a car in this era it also features two small cup holders and towards the center an ashtray with a 12 volt socket and on the doors decent door bin pockets again very good for the era on your sun visors there are some vanity mirrors with lights seatbelt warning up the top here along with the third sun visor over here I would also like to mention that there are these stoppers here to prevent keys phones from falling in between the seat which is a nice feature and it also has a soft leather armrest which you can just flip up and down and this one has been fitted with a lockable glove box which wasn't available until 1993 but apart from that the car is completely original let's now move on to the back seats inside the w124 so i am a full-size adult five foot nine and i have this front seat set in my driving position and as you can see i've got plenty of knee room plenty of toe room and plenty of head room and in relation to other key features behind the front seats there are some matte pockets and moving towards the center there is a fold down armrest which is nice and soft and up the top here is the car's original first aid kit behind me there are two leather headrests along with the lamp and up the top here extended grab handles with little coat hook hangers and looking lower down electric window switches on either side extended Zebrano trim and extended leather on the doors along with two ashtrays on either side of the door cards let's now move on to the boot space so if I just push this button here lift this up it reveals a nice wide opening and 520 litres of boot capacity so what that means is you can fit two large suitcases in there and it even features its original warning triangle on the top section of the boot lid there's also a light and two little storage sections on either side and if I just lift this mat up as you can see this car features its original spare tire along with the jack and set of tools and it comes complete with a stack of receipts from Mercedes-Benz including the Mercedes-Benz manuals and pamphlets and alongside that the original delivery slip and the two keys but most importantly the logbook with matching VIN numbers it also verifies that it has been serviced by authorized Mercedes-Benz dealerships which again is very rare for a car in this vintage so for all of that out of the way let's now move on to the powertrain let's now move on to the powertrain so under the bonnet of this w124 it features the glorious m103.983 power plant which is a naturally aspirated three liter inline six cylinder petrol engine that is paired to a four speed automatic transmission sending its power to the rear wheels and this puts out 135 kilowatts and 260 newton meters of torque and as you can see i have also included additional information about this power plant and lastly just have a look at the condition of this engine bay the metal sections along here all the plastic components up here are nice and black and even along where the brake booster is that all looks brand new and even all the pipes and hoses and the red markings from the factory so what is the 300e like to drive stick the key in 
it starts up very nicely and in relation to its visibility I can clearly see what's in front of me large side windows and good vision up the back and in relation to the pedals they sit a little bit offset to the right hand side whereas the steering wheel sits a little bit offset to the left so you do feel a bit twisted behind the wheel but other than that the driving experience and even the seating position is very pleasant the ride comfort is also on the soft side and I do also think this powertrain does blend in very well with the W124 as well as other Mercedes-Benz models from this era. And in relation to how this compares with other Mercedes-Benz models from this era, like for example a W126, I've always found that the W124s were more of a driver's car, they were a bit more nimble, a bit more playful and also less heavier. So what is my final verdict on the W124? Well, overall with this engine, it feels more like a driver's Mercedes compared to other models from this era. And in addition to that, a timeless design, superior engineering and build quality, and therefore I think it's one of the best E-Class models ever produced. But let me know what you think of my verdict, and if you've gained value from my content, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you in the next film. Thanks for watching.